Now, French President Emmanuel Macron has met with German Chancellor Angela Merkel in Berlin. It's Macron's first foreign trip after his inauguration on Sunday. The two leaders have discussed the European asylum system and trade relations. Macron says France and Germany should work on a roadmap for deep reforms for the EU, while Merkel has called for a new dynam dynamism in German-French relations, saying that the two countries' interests are closely tied together. The future of Germany is in Europe, and with that, Germany will do well only if Europe does well. The new French president offers the possibility of bringing new dynamic to European development. Let's get an update on that meeting. Elena Cassis joins us in Paris now. Elena, welcome to the show. Now, President Macron, he just named uh, his relatively unknown moderate center-right lawmaker, Edouard Philippe, as his prime minister. What was the reaction to this appointment? And certainly, how do you see his other upcoming appointments going? Well, Edouard Philippe, as you say, there is a new face for the French people. Most of them will have seen him for the first time about half an hour ago when he gave his first TV interview. But he's also a man of the right, a conservative who was known for being a protégé of the former Prime Minister Alain Juppé, who of course ran for the centre-right presidential nomination unsuccessfully as a moderate back in November. So for Macron, this is, at least on paper, a sign that he's opening up to both the left and the right. Tactically, though, it's an attempt to split the centre-right Republican Party. He's trying to win over a faction of more moderate MPs within it to try and get them to join his presidential majority. There are pre uh, parliamentary elections, rather, coming up in just five weeks here in France. And in order to, to uh, put together the majority that Macron needs uh, to take his reform proposals forward, he needs to persuade sitting MPs on both the left and the right to join him. He's got 24 socialists who've signed up to his candidate at list and now he needs to win over some center-right MPs so certainly that's what's going on tactically with the choice of Philippe and it's that's certainly it's not going down well among many in the established center-right certainly the mainstream Republicans see this as a tactical move to try and split the party whereas of course for traditionally left-wing politicians this is just the evidence that Macron is fundamentally a right-wing politician that's what they've been saying but of course they're all electioneering with these parliamentary elections coming up in just five weeks and it will be down to French voters in the end to decide who will be uh, Macron's prime minister for most of the next five years. Mm. Well, let's talk a little bit more about his policies going forward. We know France uh, it currently has one of the world's largest public sectors, a public spending about 56.5% of GDP there. Now, as cutting that spending bill becomes more urgent uh, for the country, how does he plan to do this uh, while reduce taxes, uh, especially given the fact that he's talking about cutting taxes for corporations? Well, one of Macron's promises is that he's going to reduce the French deficit to 3% of GDP, which is supposed to be a requirement for any Eurozone country, but one that France has flouted year on year. It's very important for what he wants to achieve in the international sphere that he can do this in order to be taken seriously, in order to be credible as an economic power, especially for countries like Germany. France has to get his deficit under control. Now, uh, Macron believes that cutting corporation tax as part of a series of measures, including uh, widespread reform to the labor market is going to help create jobs and that in itself will reduce public spending. Uh, he also plans of course to cut some public sector jobs which is likely to be very controversial and much of this reform will have to be forced through against what's very likely to be widespread support from the unions, widespread opposition rather from the unions probably in the form of street demonstrations. So really uh, Macron's honeymoon if he wants to push through these quite controversial reforms is likely to be very short. Mm. Now, Macron has also argued quite passionately for uh, European integration uh, and certainly for France to stay in the EU uh, region. However, he has talked about reforming the bloc. Now, he did meet uh, Germany's uh, Chancellor Angela Merkel today. She has advised him in the past not to push too hard for radical reforms. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about what the discussion was around this at their meeting today? 
Well, Macron is passionately pro-European, and part of his uh, electoral manifesto was that he wanted more Eurozone governance. He wants to create a finance minister for the Eurozone, and he wants it to be able to raise its own finance through some form of taxation, which it can then invest in public and private sector projects. Now, he's not the first French president to propose this kind of thing, and it has been rejected by German governments repeatedly in recent decades, because for the Germans, who tend to be a little bit more thrifty, it's just an excuse for the French to spend more public money, in this case other people's. Everything to do with common Eurozone governance sounds in Berlin a lot like the mutualization of the debts and financial obligations of what Germans consider the Eurozone's more spendthrift countries. But Emmanuel Macron there in the press conference that he gave just a short time ago with Angela Merkel in Berlin was very keen to reassure the Germans that that's not what he wants to do. He's not talking about euro bonds or the mutualization of debt, he said, but he does want to work more closely together on economic issues. He knows, though, that now is not the time to move forward with that. Germany itself has elections on the 24th of September, and so uh, Macron will need to know what German government he's working with before he can push forward with far ranging Eurozone reform. Mm. Well, many thanks, Elena, for that update. Elena Cassis joining us there in Paris, France.